Welcome to Bigfoot Case Files, true stories of encounters with Bigfoot. Del Norte County, California, May 8, 2005, telephone interview. Two young Yurok girls stopped their truck on Little Jones Creek Road. They reported they got out of the truck to have a smoke as to not smell up the truck, which belonged to their uncle. The older girl told a joke and the girls were both laughing loudly and running around the truck, just goofing off and acting silly, they said, but making a lot of squealing noise in an otherwise very quiet area. Worn out from running around and generally having fun, they climbed up on the hood of their truck to rest and talk mostly about a cute boy that interested them. After about 10 minutes, both girls testified they began to feel really weird. There was no traffic on the road and they were wrapped up in their teen talk, not paying a great deal of attention to their surroundings, when a very large, grey-black, hair-covered, man-like thing got their attention when it walked out onto Little Jones Creek Road and stood very still at the side of the road. The girls said they froze, afraid to move, because it might be, so, like a ghost, they just stared at the creature. They said it stared back and that its hands were together at mid-waist, twisting fingers nervously. The session of glaring back and forth at one another went on until the girls decided they should get back in the truck. They said they moved very slowly off the hood and each going toward their own side of the truck got in and locked the doors. When they looked to see if the creature was still there, it was gone. There was no smell and the girls said there was no audible noise from the creature and it did not approach them. It didn't move once out in plain sight. It only stared at them and then went somewhere in a direction they didn't see. They started the truck up and left, went home to tell their grandmother and uncle. The grandmother told the girls they had seen the Creek Devil, who is the boss of these mountains, and that those Creek Devils are curious about young girls, probably attracted by their giggling and horsing around. The girls didn't know how tall it was, but yelling into the phone that it was huge, bigger than a man, and had the shoulders of a giant. They described the hands and fingers were of a man, only bigger, and that the skin on the hands and upper face was dark-skinned. The face was man-like with whiskers on the face and butt ugly. They also said it had visible male genitalia, like Yurok men have, only it was dark-skinned. Parts of the chest were bare of hair, but most parts of the upper torso had hair tight against its body, like a short-haired dog. Neither girl noticed feet, and they didn't see the backside of the creature. They were excited and youthfully graphic in their descriptions. Toward the end of the interview, the uncle took the phone and asked to respect their privacy, that the girls would not be going out on Little Jones Creek Road again, and he didn't want Bigfoot people elbowing their way around his place like before. He said he followed the Manitoba Cree story and didn't want that to happen to them. The uncle also said they knew the creatures lived there and they want them left alone. They are the Ridge Walkers. Del Norte County, California, September 22, 2005. At about 5.30 a.m. during a routine drive, Travis Cover noted, It was still dark outside and I was driving along. I reached down to grab my lunch and when I looked back up, there it was, a big hairy monster standing next to a yellow road sign. He was driving a conventional truck and was going about his business as a trucker, heading northbound on Highway 199 toward Oregon at the time of the sighting. Based on the road sign and further investigation, the head on the Bigfoot appeared parallel to the steering wheel. Mr. Cover estimated the size of the subject at 8 feet 3 inches tall. He remarked he was so thick, maybe 800 pounds or so, 3 or 4 feet thick. It raised its arm to block the beam from my headlights. I've never seen anything like it. Trinity, Humboldt, and Del Norte counties, mid-1990s. I worked in Northern California from 1986 through 1997. I was a botanist and was categorizing plant migration, disease, density of growth, etc. By profession, I'm an entomologist and botanist. I teach at a junior college. I did some work for a firm contracted by the U.S. Forest Service before getting my degrees. The work was essentially testing soil erosion and the effect on forest floor growth after tree canopies had opened up, the effect of sudden influx of sunlight, rain, etc. on previously sheltered flora. 
I'm the last of the bow-tie-wearing, conservative, dare I say, quirky folk up here. I've never used the net for anything other than research, preferring the dusty, leather-bound texts of my predecessors. I spent many nights in the woods, usually traveling on horseback, or, when possible, by four-wheel drive. The following are the stories of two encounters I had in the 1990s. I was hiking on this particular morning in September of 1990 along a creek and checking growth of certain plants along the high-water mark. I found some footprints just off the creek, which made my skin crawl. They were human in appearance, but much larger. I measured the five prints that were the best and found them to be 19 inches in length and nearly 7 inches across. I have heard all of the woodman's stories and Indian legends about a Bigfoot-type creature, but having spent 20-plus years in the North Woods and never had even a sniff, I dismissed them as folklore, or tales born of drinking by the fire. This, however, was not dismissible. I had been about 20 miles east and south of Eureka for two days and had not seen a soul. Something was here and left evidence. I looked around and saw nothing out of place. Birds were all over and nothing seemed amiss. I cursed myself for leaving my camera at my office. I made a mental note of the prints and proceeded downstream for about a quarter mile to where the creek I was on flowed into another. As I came to the confluence, I looked to the spit of land between the creeks and saw what I thought was a huge tree stump in the bushes. It moved. I was probably a hundred yards from it, and it was a creature, a human gorilla giant. I guessed it to be seven feet tall, and it was facing away from me. It appeared to be watching something on the other side of the creek. I crouched down behind a tree and watched it for four or five minutes. It moved to its left and went forward into the brush. After about five minutes, I crossed the creek to my left and went to where it was. It was gone and had to cross the creek to get past me. I could see where it came out of the creek on the other side, but the creek bed was gravel and prints were impossible to see. The terrain on the other side was steep and wooded, certainly difficult for a human to climb, but there was no other route but up, and the creature seemed to negotiate it quickly and quietly. I sat for about an hour and absorbed it all before hiking the two hours back to my truck. The second encounter. It was only about five miles further east from encounter number one, a total of approximately 35 miles south-southeast of Eureka, and was the day after my daughter's third birthday, November 17, 1995. I was camping with my two hunting hounds. The dogs were the pick of my herd of hunting dogs, the two smartest and best behaved. I had pitched a tent about 50 paces off a creek, which was running pretty well after two days of rain. My dogs were trained to the point where they would not randomly run off after a bird or animal and were not leashed. One of them, Zeke, would occasionally sit up, listen, and sniff when there was apparently nothing to see or hear. After dinner and a fire, I packed it in, probably 9 p.m. I was awakened by a scream of some kind, a deep, screeching, growling scream. It seemed to be close, within a hundred yards. The dogs were sitting up and alert, but not nearly as scared as I was. I had a 9 mil pistol at the ready, hoping that I would never have to use it in self-defense. Funny about that, that's exactly what I bought it for, and here I am hoping not to have to draw it. The scream had my heart racing, but there was no more noise. I know there was no more noise, because I didn't sleep after that. I thought I heard another scream about 7 a.m., but it was hard to tell. I was standing over a good-sized fire. The dogs were not themselves, pacing, pointing, out of sorts. I got the feeling that something was up, but couldn't put my finger on it. I tethered them to a tree and set off down the creek to wash my coffee cup out. I got the feeling that I was being watched, and as I came up out of my crouch at the creek, I saw, big as life, across the creek, was a creature standing in some brush, looking at me. I had seen one five years earlier, but never saw the front. This guy was at least seven feet tall with a huge torso, little or no neck, and arms like Yule logs. It couldn't have been more than 75 yards from me. It was upwind, and I smelled a stink unlike any other. I never got a whiff of the first creature I saw, but this thing smelled like rotting meat wrapped in an old, wet, moldy carpet. 
I stepped back and never took my eyes off him. He stepped back into the low growth. We looked at each other for about a minute, then he disappeared. I remember the dark hair with little around the eyes and mouth. I remember the extremely powerful build and the absolute silence in which he disappeared. I was going to cross the creek and check out where he had been, but the water was really moving and I didn't risk it. They do exist. They are there. I will never again camp or hike without a camera on my belt or in my hand. I had a camera with me, but it was with my gear, not accessible. Since then, I've had four or five vocal encounters in Trinity, Del Norte, and Humboldt County. I spend most of my time up here, and I will always be ready for another encounter. Signed, V.L. Del Norte County, California, Redwoods, three miles south of Crescent City, March 1997. The area is located approximately three miles off the California Coastal Highway and down in an area of second-growth redwoods that was logged at the turn of the century. The trees here are very large, but the undergrowth is so thick that each campsite is carved out of the woods and it's next to impossible to walk into it without a machete or a saw. Anyone could be standing within 10 feet and you couldn't see them. Through the campground runs Mill Creek year-round. All the campsites are basically along the creek or at least accessible by the paths. I only saw his silhouette, but he was seven and a half to eight feet, broad-shouldered and clothed in some kind of fur or cover. What amazed all of us was his stealth. We were staying in an empty part of the park as we were anglers and set Mill Creek as our base camp. Each night we would return to the park after salmon fishing on the ocean. My husband and I were alone in our tent and the screen was closed but the flap open. We were on separate cots. I awoke startled and wondered why. I looked over my head and saw the faint silhouette of a large man and smelled a strong odor of what I would describe as a heavy musky animal smell. I reached over to see if my husband was in his cot, and he was, and I said, Ken, someone's in our camp. The figure stepped into the deep woods in the very dark night, without so much as a branch snapping. We jumped out of our tent, only to be baffled by how the figure went into the deep undergrowth without a flashlight and made no noise. After a bit, we calmed down and returned to sleep. The next morning, I remember trying to enter the woods through that area, and unable to even in broad daylight. We fished the next day and our friends, another couple, arrived to fish the next few days with us and set up a tent opposite ours. After relaxing around the campfire and forgetting the previous night's events, we went to sleep. Again I was startled awake and the smell was present. Only this time I slowly touched my husband and woke him as I rolled over as in sleep and tried for a better look. The silhouette was there again and I used trees to take an idea of how big it was. The figure was just standing there and looking right at me. I saw him kind of lean toward me like he wanted a better look, but not coming closer. Just then, Kevin, one of the couple with us, yelled out, Ken, what are you doing? I yelled back that it wasn't Ken, and the figure again stepped into the deep woods, and with just a small amount of brush sound, he was gone. We all then proceeded to see if we could find where he went by using our flashlights, but the deep growth prevented our getting through. After a few minutes, I had Ken stand where the figure was standing, and I laid down on the cot, and at six foot four, he was much smaller than the figure. We estimated that he was approximately seven and a half to eight feet tall, and very agile. The next morning, I went to speak to the park people about the incident, and they were very nice, and said they have regular sightings on the off-seasons. I didn't believe in Bigfoot prior to this incident, but I sure do now. He was watching me and I don't know how long. Annie Smith Kevin's Testimony We were camped as Annie described. The campground was pretty empty this time of year, which suited us just fine. I was awakened in the middle of the night by some movement in camp and got up to investigate, figuring it was a bear trying to get into our stuff. The moon was out and stars shining. It was real pretty through the redwood canopy. There was a large redwood tree centered between our tents and approximately 10 feet or less away towards the creek. As I looked towards the creek, I saw a big dude standing there in the shadow of the tree, silhouetted against the moonlit gravel of the creek, and thought, hoped, 
it was Ken taking a leak, since he's a pretty big guy. He was just standing there, peering at me and the tent nonchalantly. It kind of startled me, and that's when I yelled, Ken, what are you doing? Immediately, Annie said, that isn't Ken, he's in here. And as I recall, she came out of the tent. We stood there, side by side, Annie clutching my arm. I thought she was going to break it, and watched what at the moment we thought was an intruder turn and walk slowly down and diagonally across the creek into the woods on the other side. As he stepped out into the moonlight, I could see more of its features, and especially the dark, hairy body and its size. He looked back at us as he walked. I have lived in the woods all my life and have seen a lot of critters, but never one like that. It was pretty eerie. By now my wife, Davy, and Ken both got up, and we tried to walk down the creek, but it was too thick, as she described. I remember having Ken stand next to the tree, silhouetted in the moonlight, so we could judge the size, and it was definitely a foot or more taller than Ken. We tried to find footprints in the morning, but the creek bed was gravel and no sign. In the woods was a thick blanket of needles and ferns on the ground, and we could find no evidence there either. The terrain was flat, fairly open campground area in the creek bed, surrounded by large redwood trees, alders, ferns, and coastal brush, berry vines, etc. Fairly steep hillsides adjacent to the creek, and very thick, virtually impenetrable underbrush. The creature was tall, seven foot plus, man-like, walking upright, and very agile. Not round like a bear. Hairy or furry. Park rangers were notified, and we told friends. Kevin Martin Thanks for listening. If you've had an encounter or sighting of a Sasquatch and would like your story told here, please email me, Lynn Smith, at BigfootCaseFiles at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.